What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to Apple Weekly. Another week, another glorious round of beta software updates. So in this video, we're gonna show off even more new features in the latest iOS 16 beta, along with an update on the performance and battery life. And then we're gonna talk about the iPhone 14 and even more production issues, the upcoming Apple Watch Pro, Apple hiring a former Lamborghini executive for the Apple car, and more. And as always, if you guys want to stay updated with all things Apple, make sure to click that subscribe button down below so you don't miss next week's episode. And if you're interested in this wallpaper, it is linked down in the description below. It is my first wallpaper collection, and it's also free for channel members. So if you tap on that join button, channel members get all of my future wallpaper packs for free, but it is also available for purchase. And I appreciate all the support I got for this wallpaper pack. It was really awesome to see. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into this video. And we're gonna start off with even more iOS 16 features and changes found in the latest beta four. So first off, you will notice on the home screen that we now have a blue magnifying glass right there for the spotlight search. So before that was just gray, it kind of matched with the search right there. And this actually did not change for me until I went into my settings and to home screen and toggled off search and toggled it back on. And that's when it changed to blue. So that is a new change here in this latest beta. And then if we head to our lock screen right here and we tap on the album artwork on our now playing platter, of course it does make it bigger. I talked about this in my initial what's new video. The album artwork is bigger. Also the player down here is a little bit thicker and just the buttons are bigger as well. But you will notice that in the background, it's actually animated like it is in the Apple Music application when you go to the now playing screen. So you will see it's very faint, but the background is actually moving while you have this album artwork on your lock screen and it looks really good. I love this little minor touch. It just adds more, you know, customizability. It makes the lock screen look just so much different than what we're used to with Apple products and iOS. So I love that. Also on the lock screen, something I've been asking about forever is that when we go to one of our focus modes, if we're actually in a focus mode, so let me just put it in focus mode real quick. Let's go to test right here and you will see on the lock screen, we have our focus mode down there. You see test well before, and I reported this in feedback several times, Times, but if you tap on that, you're now able to turn off the focus mode or change to a different focus mode. So for whatever reason, that was not there before. You were not able to change it, but now you can. So if I put it into recording a video, you can see there it goes here and we can tap it again to turn it off or change it. We don't need to go into our control center here and press on focus and turn it off. It was very cumbersome. It took a while before, but now it's finally been adjusted here in beta four. Now, another change on the lock screen here in beta four is that when we actually unlock our phone, if we have a face ID device, you will see that the padlock up top stays there for like a little bit longer, maybe a second longer than it did before. Before when you unlocked it, it kind of just disappeared right away, but now it hangs around for a little bit longer than it did on previous beta. Just a minor change, but something I noticed. Also the permissions for Safari and the control center have changed. So if you use your location, your camera, your microphone inside of Safari, if you tap on that here for the privacy section, you will see that it now shows the domain. It doesn't just say Safari, it shows the actual domain that used that information now. We also have three new CarPlay wallpapers. So you can see the new wallpapers for CarPlay. These were just added with Beta 4 if you do have a car that utilizes CarPlay. We also have some changes to Mail in Beta 4. So if we go into our settings and then go to Mail, and if we go down to the bottom, you will see that we have undo send delay at the bottom right there. We can now change when we want that undo send to have like the time limit we want that to be. So you can see right here, it shows 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 30 seconds. That's the amount of time that you have set for you to be able to undo a message. So if you send a message and you only want to be able to undo it after 10 seconds, you could do that. But I think most people probably want it at 30 seconds, I would think at least. So if you realize you made a spelling error or you didn't want to send that email, you have 30 seconds instead of 10 seconds to undo that email. Nice little addition there. We also have some changes in the books application. So you can see here, this is beta three on the left, beta four on the right. You can see up in the top left, we have a page number right there. And that indicates going back to the previous chapter or the current chapter that you're on. So if you tap on that, it will take you back to that chapter very quickly, which is very nice. Now you will see also that we do have a little bug here in books. You can see that the page number is kind of covered up sometimes. You can see right there versus on beta three, it was fine. It was always at the bottom. So just a minor bug there. Now also when we go into our settings right here, if we go into themes and settings and then to options, you will see that the font is now set at original instead of Iowan right there. So that was how it was before. We do also have some new fonts 
in this update. So you can see we only had these ones in beta three. Now in beta four, there are several new fonts. So you can see right there, Avenir Next is new. Canela is new and also Proxima Nova and Publico. So a few new fonts have been added here in the books application. And if we head into the wallet application and go to our options up here in the top right, if we tap on the three dot ellipsis, we have some new options here. So you can see it now shows view installments, view daily cash, view card details, manage notifications, and also remove card. So that menu there has been reworked and same with Apple cash. So you can see we have this menu right here now where we can transfer to bank or also view our card details very easily. This update also includes a new splash screen for game center. So when you launch a game with game center, that's integrated with game center on beta four, you will see this new pop-up right here that says what's new in game center. See all your friends play activity and achievements on the redesigned dashboard and player profiles. And of course, if you go into your game center settings, you can see all of your recently played and your activity right here along with your friends activity if you tap on friends right there also when you type out text and you select it right here if you go over we now have the search web option back so for whatever reason that was missing in the previous beta it doesn't have to be any specific text it could just be any text but now you can search web with that whereas that was gone in the previous beta also on the lock screen if you're playing music on a airplay device like a home pod or anything else you will notice that the icon is no longer blue it's just gray so that might be a bug because before it would be blue to indicate that that is currently playing on that device but now it's just the gray glyph right there it kind of just blends in so it looks clean but i have a feeling that's meant to be blue so we'll see if that gets changed in the next beta and then in the icloud section for passwords and keychain you can see that apple has fixed the bug where they had a typo where it said secularly instead of securely so just a minor thing that has been adjusted here in this beta as expected and then i did also want to mention that apple has stopped signing ios 15.5 so this is not a new feature but it is just something i wanted to mention in this video now as far as as actual bugs go there's not really too many bugs on this latest software however there is one thing I wanted to talk about if you go to customize one of your lock screens here and you go to the widgets I notice that sometimes it's really hard or impossible to move these widgets around by dragging so let's see if it works this time so okay we move that one let's see if we can move this one and now let's try to move them back so here we go you can see what I'm talking about you can't move them back and it may just be the ones I'm using, but you can see there, I have a hard time moving these and it just simply does not move. And if I let go, it deletes the widget. So if I try to put it over here and I let go, boom, it's gone. So, and I have to add it back, which is pretty annoying. So that is a bug. I'm expecting that to be fixed in a later beta, but I have been having a lot of issues with widgets on the lock screen, just not being able to adjust them via dragging. But aside from that, like I said, there's really not too many bugs in iOS 16 beta four or public beta two. So I'm really impressed with that because I had a lot of issues, especially with crashing applications on beta three or the original public beta for public beta testers like the music application would crash a lot both TikTok and Instagram would crash like at least once per day but I've not had any crashes since updating to public beta 2 on my main device and developer beta 4 on my test device here so that's awesome performance definitely improved especially when it comes to crashing here and this latest update and then when it comes to battery life I am very pleased to say that battery life has definitely improved here with this latest build developer beta 4 and public beta too. So I talked to you guys about this in my original what's new video for beta four. I talked about how just my overall first impressions when I was recording that video, that battery life would be better. And after using it for multiple days on my main device and also several test devices, I can say for sure that battery life has improved with this update. It no longer just drains overnight on standby and doesn't just drain when doing normal tasks on your phone. It actually lasts a good bit longer now it's not on par with ios 15 yet that's not expected but it is a significant improvement over the previous three betas and the main reason we don't have as many bugs in this update is because the release notes are just chock full of bug fixes like i mentioned in my original what's new video there are just so many resolved issues in this update so i find it hard to believe that issues you were having on previous betas are still existing after beta 4 because this squashes just a ton of bugs so i would imagine that the ones that are currently remaining are not very major i mean they could be but me personally you know i've not really seen any major bugs and i haven't really seen you guys 
consistently say the same bug. Like I haven't seen a lot of people say that they've been having one bug. It's usually just, you know, one off random bugs that people are having. So that's always a good sign that we're trending in the right direction. All right. So now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 16 developer beta five and public beta three. So we can expect that in two weeks from this week. So that would put us on the week of august 8th since we are still on a two-week release schedule this is most likely the final two-week you know release schedule the two weeks in between after the next beta we should switch over to a weekly schedule until the final release so i would expect it maybe on the 9th or the 10th that is a good you know projection that i have right now for beta 5 and public beta 3. and then as far as an ios 15.7 again we don't know for sure that this is coming but we could see the first beta kick off on the week of august 1st so we're probably not going to have too many betas for a 15.7 but if we are going to have at least a few, then it's probably going to start next week on the week of August 1st. So we'll have to wait and see. And again, we could also see a 15.6.1 at some point in August. And then of course we will see iOS 16, the final public release sometime in mid to late September around the time of the new iPhones. All right, so now let's move on to the latest Apple news. And let's start with Apple's most recent earnings report for Q3 of 2022, because they beat expectations. So the revenue was a record 82.96 billion versus 82.81 billion estimated their eps their earnings per share was 1.20 versus 1.16 estimated and iphone sales were very strong at 40.67 billion versus 38.85 billion estimated so apple was making a ton of money and water is wet and then let's move on to an update on the iphone 14 and as we all know this year and last year also have been full of unknowns and just kind of supply chain issues and it seems that now we have yet another snag in production and quality control and that's because ming chi kuo is reporting that there was a quality issue with the iphone 14 camera lens so he said this on twitter my latest survey indicates one of Genius's iPhone 14 rear lenses likely suffered from coding crack quality issues. Apple had transferred about 10 million lens orders to Largon from Genius to avoid affecting iPhone 14 shipments. The impact on iPhone 14 shipments can almost be ignored because Largon can fill the supply gap well. Thank God. The lens coding crack problem should be addressed within one to two months based on experience. But if Genius can't handle the issue, Largon will continue to receive more orders. So thankfully, Apple has more suppliers than normal this year to kind of pick up the slack where others get something wrong or there's a defect or a quality issue. But still, this is an interesting one. I've never heard of the coding on the glass lens cracking before. So let's hope it really is a non-issue when shipments begin, you know, shipping out to customers, because of course we don't really know for sure if it's going to affect anything until the time actually comes but hopefully quo is right and it won't affect shipments much now moving on to the upcoming apple watch mark german has some new rumors for us that sound intriguing so he's saying that the upcoming apple watch pro will have the first true redesign to the apple watch since the series 4 but it's still not going to have those flat sides that we heard about in 2020 and last year as well. We hear about it every year, it seems like, but we're still not going to get those flat sides. So he says this, in addition to the 7% larger display, the longer battery life and body temperature sensor, the Pro Apple Watch will be, quote, an evolution of the current rectangular shape and not circular. It also won't have those rumored flat sides. In terms of materials, the watch will have a more durable formulation of titanium to make it extra rugged. And then he also lists out the Apple product release schedule, not really a schedule, but just what's on the you know to-do list for Apple in terms of products to release. And things seem unchanged as of this week. You could see his expectations here. There are a ton of new Apple products in the works. Now, looking a little bit further ahead, Apple just recently made a pretty major hire for its upcoming Apple car project. And while we don't know the release date for this car, I'm guessing it's still at least five years out. However, Apple did just recently hire a Lamborghini executive who oversaw chassis and vehicle dynamics engineering for more than 20 years. So this is a seasoned vet. So Bloomberg reports that Apple hired Luigi Terraborelli, 
a 20-year veteran of Lamborghini, to help lead the design of Apple's future electric vehicle. This guy worked on the Lamborghini Urus, the Huracan, and the Aventador, in addition to other limited and concept cars. So if we can get a similar design to any Lamborghini that's ever existed, I'm definitely here for it. I just hope that the price doesn't reflect that of a Lamborghini. But then again, it is Apple, so who knows what they expect, you know, or who knows what we expect this early on in the process. I don't even think Apple knows how much it's going to cost yet. But of course, we should see more details on the Apple car in the coming years, but it's still not expected until later this decade, according to Bloomberg. And then speaking of future plans, Apple did also just recently purchase the existing Rancho Vista Corporate Center in San Diego, which is a seven building campus that was formerly home to HP and they bought it for $445 million. According to the San Diego Union Tribune, this is the first commercial property that Apple has purchased in the city. So they previously only leased buildings. This is the first one they actually purchased. Now, they also report that Apple is set to employ about 5,000 workers locally by 2026. So that's awesome. And I really cannot wait to see how this campus turns out, given the fact that the one in Cupertino is just amazing. And then finally, let's talk about yet another instance of an Apple Watch saving someone's life. So a woman from Maine said that for three consecutive nights, she was awoken by her Apple Watch, which was alerting her of an irregular heartbeat, aka AFib. And because of this alert, she went to the ER and told doctors that the Apple Watch detected that she had an irregular heartbeat. And sure enough, she did. And it was caused by a non-cancerous tumor called an atrial myxoma. So she had no clue that was there. There was no side effects or anything. She would not have known without the Apple Watch. And that's what caused the life-threatening irregular heartbeat that tumor did. So she got the tumor removed by surgeons and is now back to normal, all thanks to the Apple Watch incredible if your parents or especially your grandparents don't have an apple watch please get them one for christmas or their birthday or something it has saved lives so many times i've heard so many stories of this of either an irregular heartbeat somebody falling whatever the case may be of course it's not likely in somebody younger but if you do have grandparents i would highly recommend getting them an apple watch it could very well save their life but anyways guys there you have it that is the latest batch of apple news from this past week along with some additional features and changes found in ios 16 at beta 4 aka public beta 2. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always if you did I would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe for a lot more iOS 16 coverage coming in the coming months but anyways guys thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. Yeah.